Hello and welcome to Mostly Minnesota Music Podcast Edition. I'm Ann Tracy and I'm here with my co-host Heather Baker. And we are excited today to have Immaculate Beings. Welcome. Hi. Hello. Hi. We saw you at the Midwest Music Fest and we loved you so much that we said we have got to get these guys on. Oh, I, we appreciate that. Yeah, it was, it, was awesome. such a, it was such a fun show. What a night. Yeah, it was really fun. It Incredible. was such a gorgeous night. But before we get started, Trevor, can I ask you to do the honors and kind of introduce the folks? I see three of you. I assume they're, I, they're yeah. but you're a small portion of your big family. So just tell us, yeah, um, tell, us tell us your story. <laughs> yeah, so it's hard to get all of us together at the same time. Um, you know, a lot of the time. Um, but I have my... You know, some of my best friends here. This is Griffin and Casey. Um, Griffin, nice. Griffin plays lead guitar. Casey sings backups. Um, and yeah, and I'm Trev, and I play rhythm guitar, and I sing lead. And you guys are, it, it, it was such a joy to see you. I will. I, I had to laugh because I was. I'm. I'm on a road trip with my kids this week, and all we've been listening to your music. Kids, my kids are probably, my kids are 16 to 22. I'm not, I'm not here with cute eight-year-olds, but so we were listening to your music through a lot of today. And I think that I was going through a little bit of a don't come back moment at the show at the Midwest Music Fest. And then you guys came up on stage and I was in so much better, just as soon as you started in a better headspace. I was like, oh, I'm going to let some stuff wash off me right now. So tell us how you bring that kind of magic. <laughs> you know, just hearing that, I mean, it's just amazing because, you know, we feel so good, you know, performing and being up on stage and, you know, um, and I think the way that we share such a collective feeling of joy and like togetherness is because one of the things that everybody has in common is trauma. We all have trauma. And especially after this year, um, if you didn't have trauma before, you do now. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and so part of that, um, you know, just part of all of that is that we are able to come together and share our love for music as well as our share for our share. We can share our love for one another. And that then kind of grows out, um, you know, into the audience because now we have this audience you know, full of people who we just love, you know, like close friends, people who we've met once, but shared such an impacting like moment, you know, and like in uh, new people who, you know, don't know what to expect, but then feel at home right away, you know, and we can all come together and just shed that trauma skin and just feel good. Even if it's for an hour, even if it's for however long, let's just share this moment and just breathe and feel good together. I was gonna say at that particular show, <clears throat> we had to wait for the rain to kind of subside, but it made it so much better because it's sort of like, you know, right bef literally right before the show, they're like, okay, no mask, but you know, keep, you know, keep a little distance, but it felt like washing away all the shit a little bit. It was a beautiful day. We had the rain to, yeah, kind of cool us down. And then you guys came in and you are like a hug of music love. And it was crazy cool and just infectious between you and Nerdy. I don't know who was more infectious of the self love and promote such good vibes it's so inspiring well i appreciate that and matt is you know such a dear friend of mine and um to see everything that he has been doing um as well as sharing you know his love for music on top of that i mean it was such truly such an honor to like share an event with nerdy and definitely yeah 
we 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 love Matt. <laughs> I felt really cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're definitely the cool kids. Oh, fi finally. <laughs> <laughs> How, I want to go back, how did you all become bandmates, family, whatever, what is, what's the connection or story, just because I feel like you're so eclectic, too. <laughs> well, most of us met at McNally Smith College of Music, yep. um, and we were all pretty much there when it closed. Casey is the lucky one who made it out with a degree. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> but we were you know I was nine credits away Griffin was six wow. credits away or something like that you know and it, it really wrecked us you know wow. and and through that healing process is actually like how we uh wrote Mental Space yeah. our first album and you know and just taking the time to accept that it's time to be vulnerable and it's time to like be honest about what we're experiencing what we're going through and we were already a band we were at the time in college called trevor divine and the immaculate beings um but then obviously it just wasn't about me at all it was about all of us collectively growing and healing and discovering and so then we met you know christian along the way who was our bassist and then we met martin who is our drummer and then we just kind of became like just family you know yeah. and it's yeah it's just i i feel very lucky and you know on top of being in the band we have such a large friend group um that we collectively share and love and you know feel like endless support from and so i just have to say like like the only way that it came about is that we were just lucky you know and we all found each other when we needed each other and I think it's worth for folks listening outside of the Twin Cities, certainly outside of Minnesota, might not know the the story, the McNally story. I mean, I think anybody who was in school there was deeply affected. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Definitely. You know, McNally Smith was the contemporary music college, you know, very famous contemporary music college in St. Paul. And because it was a for-profit college, we had no backbone. And unfortunately, they just lost all the funding and also accreditation. Yep. And it just was a giant disaster, you know? Um, but the thing that has been kind of coming up again and again is like, was it worth it? Was it worth it? And like, to be honest, I would do it all over again and lose my degree again. Yep. yep. You know, as traumatic as it was, like, we're right here now like we've made it to this point because of everything that has happened no we took what we learned with us and that's all that matters not a piece of paper mm -hmm. and the connections that we made i mean from business to friendship you know it just was amazing we never would have met each other truly if it wasn't for this situation or just yeah. being at that school in general yep well, I was going to say through that being a traumatic event too, it probably just tightened your unit even more, you know? Definitely. It definitely brought the the class closer together too, you know, yeah. after yeah. everything happened. Yeah. Even the teachers too. The teachers all rallied up with us. Like, ev like everyone was in the same boat at that point. Yes. And we also, it became acceptable, even though it's always been acceptable, it became internally acceptable to speak on what we needed you know and we all now have the ability to recognize like what we need you know what each other needs what we and what we can do to be like bounce back like like it's and it's uh, it's great because now the support system is endless right that's fantastic i I knew well some people who were kind of stuck in that position and some have really bounced back and some have not. And what's funny, I wasn't like, I, I, I was a librarian. The same thing happened <laughs> to the library school that I went to. They lost accreditation the year after I graduated. And, it, and the, the problem with it that people might not understand is that those credits don't necessarily train, you don't, you can't just bring them to the U. 
Right. You know, they're like MCAD credit. There's a whole difference. So it's so I, I love to see the resiliency of you. And I'm I'm gonna send this now to a couple of people who I think needs to hear the resilience, you know, because it is, it's a very and then in a really unique way, because that was a couple of years ago now. Mm-hmm. What a strange preparation for a pandemic. <laughs> yeah, so to have that yeah. strength of saying what you need. <laughs> yeah. I mean, really though. I mean, but we, you know. We hunkered down together, you know, and we kept each other safe and stable. And even though we might not necessarily have been stable the whole time, we gave each other the love and ourselves the love and tools that we needed to bounce back. And so, you know, as horrible as it is to think about the fact that we had one traumatic event after another, we also had two extremely pivotal pivotal moments of growth and um and so and it's i truly feel like we are all on the simultaneous phoenix rising moment now because there's been a lot of ash all over it's really messy but we're still rising from it you know and collectively I think that's well. I think that's fantastic. I just had a dinner with two of my kids who are 21 and 22. We've had a very similar conversation. So I think that there's a lot of people, whether they went to McDonald's or not, who are. I think everybody's in that position to one degree or another. Mm-hmm. You know, some of us just have longer to look back to see what you know what life was like before. Because your the album Mental Space really it came out in 2020. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yep. It came out um, about a month and a half before the pandemic. <laughs> Great time. Yeah. Woo. We kind of, we just felt the climate changing and we, we, we were like, here, we, here you go. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> this will come in handy. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Just push, repeat, repeat, repeat. <laughs> yeah, give yourself 14 months. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. It'll, it'll be. I, there's, there's a lot of kind of tension in the album, too. It's the, you know, call me, come in, don't come back. Don't. Is there a, an overriding sort of theme for the album that, that, that you came from you, you know, that you said this is going to be a little bit about this? For sure. The whole, the album is for sure a concept album. Yep. Um, and we wrote it as a concept album. It started as a concept and it was kind of weird to think about having a concept album as your first debut album. Um, and it's also a lot of pressure, but I, it was really important because we kind of sat down and gave ourselves a timeline of like, what have we gone through and like, how did we go through the, go through it, you know? And so, Collectively, a lot of the overall consensus was, you know, we've been very lost, very disassociated, um, very, you know, vulnerable. And, you know, that's the whole just idea of mental space is being trapped in your mental space in this galaxy, in this universe that you create for yourself in your head. And sometimes you can truly get trapped there. And, and so it, then it goes through, you know, come in space control is literally like trying to like get your family's attention and I don't necessarily mean real family just your your network of people your people yeah yeah and um and then going into don't come back which is a breakup song of actually not a breakup in a romantic way it's a breakup of the negative part of your mental health you know and that's why the final verse is you were just inside my head I made you up and then you fled um and, and that kind of, you know, kind of tells you right there, like, this is a mental health thing. And then the next song after that is hope. It's I'll be home soon, you know, and giving that light of like, we're not there yet, but we're coming, you know? And, and that's why the ending of that song is so big is because like, like that shows like we, all of our voices are in there and we did that together, you know? And then going from there to lawn chairs, which is, you know, kind of a moment to reflect, which is all this guy right here. Yeah. <laughs> um, and kind of then taking the moment to kind of retrace your steps and recognize your past traumas that you have to then accept 
and understand to then move forward. Hmm. Um, and then, you know, moving forward to call me where, you know, it's kind of speaks for itself. I'm lost. You, but I, I know you can reach me anytime, but you got to call me like, kind of thing, you know, and yeah, more straightforward. Yeah, yeah. And then conceptually moving, wise. Yeah, yeah, moving through to, you know, Black Hole Soul, which, you know, going through the singularity and coming out the other end to welcome to the other side. And it's a full, it's just a journey, you know, and it's a very personal and vulnerable journey that we rode together. <laughs> I mean, really, like, yeah. it was, it's so weird. And, you know, and to think that we were able to create out of all of that, and now we have something that's like permanently out there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's so weird. There's no, I feel like there's no other way to put it. It's just weird. Like, and to have all of these people, you know, reaching out saying that they're connecting and that they're like understanding and, you know, really just full, fully vibing with our message. And um, it's, yeah, it's it's the most surreal experience, truly. I was gonna say if it's so hopeful and healing, and especially after this crazy time, it gives. I don't know anyone that has gone untouched with mental health during all of this. It just feels like your openness with your with this mental space and your willingness to be calling things as they are is such a gift because lots of, you know, my age, Anne's age or whatever, you know, you don't talk about it or you shove it down. And it, it's so nice to be able to speak the truth. It's and time, it's time to talk about it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and that's the thing that we kind of all realized, I think, in this pandemic is like, there is no, in this economy, there is no time to not talk about it. I mean, truly. And I know I sound that, like, sound goofy. Like, I think I, I have to have humor. It's my coping mechanism. But like, I, I mean, seriously, like, we have to talk about how we're feeling now and not be ashamed of how we're feeling because I think guilt is something that we were all collectively raised on. And there is no more time to feel guilty about being honest with ourselves. And that's for all ages, like <laughs> all ages up to 99 plus, like. <laughs> Yay, we're in it. <laughs> Just so scream weird. goodbye over here, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's so weird because like, that that just adds so many layers to what we are you know because like you know we're a band <laughs> you know but like we have discovered the importance of what needs to be focused on on top of you know the social injustice that's happening constantly especially within our city you know now is the time that we need to use our privilege and our platform to talk about that um but on top of that we need to talk about how we're healing and how we're taking care of ourselves um on top of that too you know and i would love to hear ways that you all are taking care of yourselves in this time to uh, doing this and going to shows as we can and the midwest music festival definitely felt like the opening of a non-nursing home life as i call it <laughs> <laughs> Felt like I was just sitting watching time go by going, oh, okay, this is how it's going to go. So, yeah. I'm, I'm holding a prudent silence because I've been driving for nine hours today. <laughs> 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 I am having an amazing vacation. We've gone to Austin, but we drove today from San Antonio to um, Lafayette. And I oh. think the last thing I said to my kids was, Oh, <laughs> and lose it your mom is gonna lose it because i'm the only driver i mean but otherwise i think it's some of it well, and i had two kids in canada for a year and a half that i didn't see because that's where they go to school yeah. so wow. for us if you talked to us yesterday we ended up at a hotel in san antonio that was somehow accidentally 
right across the street from a street festival that was going on until midnight. We're out there dancing, we're eating uh. tacos, we're, <laughs> some of us are drinking, we're having an amazing time. Family and music and fun and people and, you know, and taking the time to do it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the, taking the time to just say, I don't need to do any of that stuff right now. I did so much of that stuff last year, you know, just, yeah. I did all my email last year. I did all my, you know, but it, yeah. it's, it, it's it, the last year has really warped our sense of time because on the one hand, we had way too much time. And on the other hand, we didn't have nearly enough. Yeah. It's time to, time to go outside and live life a little bit more. Yeah, exactly. You know, and that, that's, you know, hearing you say this, you know, it's so funny because Midwest Music Fest is the first time I saw my mom in 14 months. Oh, and my oh. sister and my step dad and my brother-in-law and they drove to midwest music fest for the show mm -hmm. and it it oh whew, it just boom yeah i'm from michigan and so you know it's hard for me to get home sometimes you know and casey's from chicago and so nice we, we understand yeah yeah oh they got to see a beautiful show then <laughs> yes it, it, it's it, it's so cool to have my mom be like my biggest supporter, you know, like I, yeah, I don't know. It's she's, she's just the best. I want her at every show. <laughs> I was going to say, I was trying to co um, get Anne, but she's allergic to metal. You had the coolest earrings oh. for your merch. Oh, yeah. Um, we have the immaculate earrings. Those are made by our good friend, uh, Groovy Jewels. Um, she has a craft Etsy page, website, everything, and she's helping us with merch right now. And so we love working with like local people, just our friends, especially. Mm -hmm. And, um, and she really put in a lot of work for that. And yeah, they turned out so cool. And they're ceramic with metal, like so cool. <laughs> it's cool to have like talented friend <laughs> yeah it's just kind of a giving circle that you all get to help out each other you know yeah put your stuff out there I uh, so are you did you ha you didn't have much time to go out and spread this album of yours around much yeah we um, we didn't <laughs> Um, but we, to, the fact that we are able to have as many followers still as we do is almost a miracle, um, if not a miracle. And um, we are working on a new project now. Um, we've had some time to write and process. <laughs> and so um, we're kind of looking at this next project as hoping we're just kind of hoping that this next project is our, you know, up and up, you know, and we're so ready to just be full-time musicians. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Like, yeah. Well, the, that's a good segue because you've got a couple of pretty awesome shows coming up. Yeah. Yeah. We, um, July 10th, we're playing at Harmony Park, which is Harmony Park Music Garden down in Geneva, Minnesota, I believe is the town, by Albert Lee. Um, and then we are playing the Turf Club for a sold out show with Tina and the B-Sides, um, local legends. We are so excited. Uh, um, and then we are using this to announce our big show. We are headlining Day Block Brewing, downtown Minneapolis. Ooh. Ooh, and they are have they have a huge outdoor stage now um and we are so excited because this is our first headline show since our album release show yep nice. and so we are hoping to expand the family awesome. <laughs> you know, what is the date of that august 13th okay good for you thank you Thank you. We're excited. Yeah. We love Dayblock. Yeah, yeah. Dayblock's super fun. And what? 
friends who have played there so far and played just beautiful shows too. And so it just, we're excited to continue on just, you know, the beautiful live music scene that's, you know, bouncing back and saving our stages. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Which is important. And you, you've got, I'm curious about an, another one you've got in September, uh, my, my own handwriting from the car. See, I want to say karate camp, but I think it's karaoke yeah. camp. Karate no, camp. No, yeah. no, it's karate. Yeah. Okay, because I was thinking it was karate chop uh, that was doing it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Tell us yeah. more about our, that because I just yeah, saw our, it. Our BFFs from Monona, Karate Chop Silence. Uh, we love them so much. Yeah. Um, we they reached out to us and they were like, Do you want to play a festival that we are throwing? And we were just like, Absolutely. Like, we love you. Done. Yes. And then they sent us the lineup and we're just up at the top. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> are you sure? Like, once again, like we're back to, huh, are you like, and so, I mean, just the fact that they are a throwing such an awesome event, yeah. like, please buy tickets, please come. It's going to be beautiful. It's at Briggs Outdoors, which is just gorgeous. And um, it's just going to be a, such a fun weekend. And to make it weird, Griff and I each have DJ sets. Um, and we're going to do late night EDM DJ sets. Yep. Awesome. And, uh, just to change it up, you know? Um, I, and I'm a huge fan of EDM. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just, you might not think it to look at me, but I love <laughs> dance EDM. Yeah. You could probably say the same thing about us. <laughs> you know <laughs> like we uh we yeah we love edm too and it's 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 fun to change it up and um it's gonna be it's gonna be fun and different <laughs> i love that idea now how back in the day before covid heather and i had an actual radio show where we picked out music every week and all of this sort of stuff but it was on the McAllister college campus which is still oh. not open how are you going to prepare? What are you going to do to prepare for that set? Because I, that's, you know, you're picking up music for people and introduce people to new music. It's a challenge. Yeah, I, I have no idea. <laughs> it's going to be perfect. I was going to say. We always, do. we always do. We just, you know, we don't, like, as much as we emotionally prepare and we practice every week, you know, but you know, we go, we go into it with open minds and open hearts. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to go up on stage with an open mind and open heart. And um, they, I hope that people are responsive to that. And I hope that we are going to be able to connect with new people in a way that is needed for them. And I hope that we are able to connect with new people that is needed for us too in a way that we can learn and grow and heal and continue to expand our family more. And we're just excited to dance. I mean, we love Sleeping Jesus. We love Arthur. We love Karate Chop Silence. We love the Shackletons. We love Carnage the Executioner. I mean, like, whoa, whoa, you know? And so we're just gonna go in it. Like we are going home to see family. Perfect. Yeah, and I feel like we have to go just putting it out there. And that's and for, I September 10th to 12th? Yeah. For September. folks who are listening, I just really get that it. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Um, I was going to say you guys gave me the goosebumps when I heard Call Me. And Casey, I feel like part of it was your doing. And then all of your dance moves on stage. I love it. Uh, cover your head. Like, I was like, seriously, trying to do <laughs> your tilt. I was like, I need thicker hair for sure. But I was like, your hair, whole... is your hair is gorgeous. Um, oh, no, 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 no. Was in so much pain the next day. <laughs> your neck was? Oh my gosh, yeah. Like all just down my neck and back. Like, but honestly, I would do it any day in my life. Like, it... <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
But I, I do think there is just something about all of you together that it is. It's an interchangeable love. I don't know. I can't really put my, you know, what it is. It's just the vibe, the magical healing energy that you are giving and then you get to receive it back. But it, there was, you can feel that. You do bring it to the stage. And that's why when you say, really, we're at the top of the list? Yep. <laughs> you are. For a very good reason. You know, I do think you should know the importance of that component that you bring. It's, it's a work in progress. Um, you know, you don't necessarily think about how hard it is to accept love. And accepting love is so much harder than giving it. Um, mm -hmm. And we are able to give it all day. And to then have the response that we have. I mean, I try to, I mean, I want to be a diva, you know, like I try not to even be humble. Like I want, I'm ready to be, a, you know, like, I don't know, but like, it still, it still blows my mind. Like, and I still am unable to just like fully grasp that this is happening. You know, you know, it's hard not to feel like I'm still in my room, like for months on end, you know? And it's amazing to hear that people are still not only paying attention, but giving so much love to us. And, and so thank you for like the validation because like we really, really do need to hear it. And um, make sure it's working. Yeah. <laughs> it's working. It's working. You know, and so, yeah, it just means the world. And thank you so much for like giving us the time to share what we're doing and who we are and uh -huh. Yeah, it means a lot to even be given any type of platform to share what we're doing. And so we appreciate you both very much. Well, I would say as much as we, I mean, I, mean, I can't even tell you how much we enjoyed the show that night. It was just re really was kind of the mood changer and everything else. To hear more about the story that's behind it just deepens the love for it. You know, I just think, oh, that's, you know, I, I think that, I think in a way there, as I've said, you kind of have that tension and there's kind of the, the outside self and the inner self and you guys seem to do a good job bringing them closer together than a lot of people do and helping other people bring their inside and their outside a little closer together. Yeah. I, I want to be able to make a genre, like not any type of like musical genre, just like being inclusive. Our genre is inclusive. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, and it's, yeah, I, it's, yeah, it's cool. It's different and it's new and I'm glad that it's working. Absolutely. But I was going to say that's beautiful because it's just like, you know, our brains want to put everything in certain areas so we can figure out things or whatever. And when you're like, nope, we're everything. We're all everything. It, you know, it's not this, this, and this, and that it's cool to physically see and hear that. So then you can go, oh, okay, we don't need that goes in the blue box. This goes in the orange box. It's, it can all go in the box, you know? Yeah. It's important. You can let it all out of the box. I oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. You put it Damn away. it, you're smart. <laughs> That's I have an almost college degree. <laughs> right. Oh. Nine credits away. Right. Uh, what What is the music that you've been working on? Is it concept also? Or... Okay. Well, it's turning into one. I feel like everything that we're going to be writing from now on is just going to turn yeah. into a concert. In some, oh, yeah. in some way or another. Um, not going to give too much away yet. Yeah. But um, it's a way broader concept. Um, and I think it's going to be not only more relatable, but more 
maybe more accessible. I think it's, it's, I'll say that it's way less about help me. I'm so sad. And now it's like, let's do this. Yeah. I was going to say, I didn't, I, yeah, help me. I'm so sad still sounded really good and <laughs> it's upbeat music. still what that music is the best music truly nothing is more relatable than a sad song that's true yeah. it's like come on no but now it's 2021 and now nothing's going to be more relatable than a happy song so <laughs> give us I a year and we'll, <laughs> and we'll do it <laughs> but yeah, we just i was that um idea to go from mental space just like uh, just get in touch with your emotions and the goal for this one is just more about confidence like mm -hmm. i'm here let's do this yeah. like it's let's just show the confidence and why not just be bold let's live a little bit i'll say that i'll leave you with that i like that i like that very much that's a, that's a perfect Awesome. Awesome. Well, hopefully mm -hmm. we might get to hear glimpses of it at your shows this summer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. He's like, you only know. I was going to say, we're just going to do the quick rundown for folks who are listening. You've got I, I, July 10th. Mm -hmm. July 10th at uh, Harmony Park. Harmony Park. Um, July 17th at Turf Club, which is sold out. Um, August 13th at Day Black Brewing, um, and, uh, September 10th through 12th at Karate Camp. Perfect. More to be announced, hopefully, too. Awesome. So, yeah, yeah. Well, we look forward to that. Um, for folks who are listening, and I'll include this in the notes for, uh, where can people find you online? Um, Follow our social medias. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, but we're also on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube. Illegally download our music if you want to. It's our honor, <laughs> honestly. Like, yeah. <laughs> spread the word. Yeah. Go, go to some old school Napster. Just uh... yes. Lime wire. Lime wire. Lime wire. Nice. nice. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, I. I'm super looking forward to, sometimes we say we're looking forward to seeing people and, you know, we probably aren't going to go to the show because I, you know, because I'm going to be out of town or Heather's got to do the run a race or something, but we have tickets to see you in July 17th. So mm. people will be there. Oh, okay. Oh, Can we just see I'm you? looking forward to that. Yeah. We'll see about this wow. karate yeah. camp. Yeah. Now that might be another one too, but, or the others, but yes, this has been a joy. Really, I, as, as much fun talking to you as it was listening to you that that night. And I've had yeah. fewer beers today. Like, so <laughs> <zero>. <laughs> it's, it's such a such a fun time, and it's fun to see um, the positive music just lifting you guys up, lifting everybody up. It's a rising tide. So yes, yes. Yes. The tide is high, but I'm holding on. Mm, nice. Ah, Blonde. You're only one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're big Blonde fans. <laughs> but, thank you. But thank you. And honestly, it was, thank you for being so, like, just easy to talk to. Like, it's been just, it's, it's been just a lovely evening with you both. Thank you. So we can be part of the family is what I'm hearing. So what we're trying to say is welcome to the family. Yes. Uh, Anne is a really good backup dancer. I'm just saying, you might want her on stage. And let us know when you're back in town. Rehearsals are not too strenuous. We'll keep you posted. Perfect. Perfect. That sounds great. We'll see you then. <laughs>